Good evening. Welcome to Simple Sassy Keto, the basics. I'm going to hang out here for just a minute and wait for some people to get on. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to share. So I want everybody that's coming on, make sure you share this video to your timeline. Make sure that you let everybody know that you know that has obesity, type 2 diabetes, inflammation disorders, autoimmune disorders, anything of that nature. Let them know that we're on tonight talking about this. And even if you share it and they watch it on the replay, it is going to be on YouTube. I will upload it to the YouTube after the live is over. So what is keto? Hey guys. As you come on, please make sure that you say hello and that you let me know where you're watching from. Make sure you share to your to your timeline, to your home page. You're more than welcome to share in groups if you'd like. I just want to reach as many people as possible. So I'm just going to give a few people some time to get on before I actually start anything. I hope it's been a good Saturday for everybody. It hasn't been raining here today. That's been awesome. It's actually been a dry day in Northeast Georgia, and that is rare for this week. Hi guys, if you're watching, make sure you say hey, tell me where you're watching from, and share to your timeline. I'm very excited to do this tonight. This is an informational video on what keto is, how to get started on keto, and how to maintain. My name is Melissa English. I am the Sassy Keto Nurse. Hi, Deb. Very nice to see you. Hi, Ruth. Ruth's one of my regular followers, and she's, she's with me almost every live. I really enjoy seeing everybody here. Y'all make sure you share to your timeline so that other people can enjoy this as well and they can get this information. <laughs> Again, my name is Melissa English. I'm the Sassy Keto Nurse. I live in Northeast Georgia. I am a licensed nurse in the state of Georgia. Here on Facebook, I am a ketogenic lifestyle coach. Hi, Edna. How are you doing? She's one of my Patreons. Very nice to see you. She's in the Sassy Keto Nation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Y'all excuse me for taking a drink. I'm drinking hot tea this evening. I've been cleaning the house all day. Not that I've got anything done. Goodness gracious. Are you one of those that you start cleaning and you get caught up in the corners? I am terrible for that. I'm a terrible housekeeper. And so I get caught up in the little things. Anyways. So I'm a ketogenic lifestyle coach. I teach people how to get into ketosis, how to maintain ketosis, and how to benefit from nutritional ketosis. So what is keto? Keto is a way of eating that changes your metabolic function. Normally we process all of our energy through sugar carbohydrates, bread, pasta, table sugar, fruits. When you go into keto, you get away from fruits. You eat a very low carbohydrate load, very low, under 20 grams. And that forces your body, not that that's a bad thing, but it forces your body to change metabolic functions, change metabolic pathways, and start using fat for fuel. So what your body does is it produces ketones in your liver. Ketones are then used for energy at a cellular level. Your brain and heart actually thrive on ketones. Now, is this a weight loss diet? Not really. Keto is actually a healing diet. It allows your body to heal from a cellular level. It reduces inflammation. It can reverse type 2 diabetes. When it reduces all that inflammation, it can heal inflammatory diseases, gut disorders, autoimmune disorders. All of those things can be reversed. But the great benefit that most people come to keto for is the weight loss. 
Now, when I started out in keto in July of 2017, I weighed over 300 pounds. I was incredibly insulin resistant. I had inflammatory problems. I had metabolic disorder. I did not process foods the way most did. Every bite that I took in was stored as fat. I had severe anxiety and depression. I had high blood pressure, high cholesterol. I was a borderline type two diabetic. Truth be known, I was a type two diabetic, but I didn't know that because I never went to my doctor. I didn't have my labs done, but when I did, the first time I had them done, my A1C was 7.9. 7.9 is type two diabetic. I chose to use dietary measures to control my sugar and not go on any more prescription medications. Within three months of starting keto the ketogenic lifestyle, I came off every prescription medication that I was taking. I felt better than I'd ever felt in my life. And in the last 19 months, I have lost almost 100 pounds. I feel better than I ever have. I'm in better health than I've been since my 20s. And I feel better than I did in my 30s. And I will be 49 in July of this year. So how do you get started in keto? It's very simple. Y'all people make this so difficult and they try to dig so deep into it that they make it a difficult process. <laughs> yes, and Ruth, that's so many people are insulin resistant from the standard American diet. Our standard American diet, it keeps us eating processed foods constantly. We are told that we should eat 11 to 12 servings of grain a day and five to six servings of fruit a day. And the thing is, is that's all sugar. It's all sugar. And it causes our body to have these spikes constantly. We're told that we should eat six to eight times a day to keep our metabolism high. Well, that's just not true. It has been proven scientifically that by eating more often, we keep our insulin at high levels. When we keep our insulin high, it keeps our... How, how do I explain this so that it doesn't sound so scientific? When your insulin stays high all the time, your body never has a chance to heal, okay? So what we do in the ketogenic lifestyle is our aim is to keep our insulin levels as low as possible. To do that, we eat very low carbs, moderate protein, and high fats. Now, when I say high fat, y'all, I don't want to scare everybody off. High fats are good fats. These are good fats that have been scientifically proven. There are studies out there, there's medical journals that show that these, these fats are good for your body. They are good for your cholesterol. They are good for your healing, for your brain, for your heart. Okay? So, how do we get started? There's five steps. I learned these five steps from Dr. Ken D. Berry. He has a wonderful YouTube channel on YouTube. It's Ken D. Berry. I think it's Ken D. Berry MD on YouTube. He has hundreds of videos there. I also have a YouTube channel. It's Sassy Keto Nurse. Keto Nurse is one word with a capital K, capital N. I will put links to that in the description above once this video is over. I also have a website, and so does Dr. Barry. I advise that anybody that's interested in this, dig into it. Figure out if this is the way of life for you. I'm telling you, it has been a godsend for me. It changed my life. Right now, our group, Sassy Keto Nurse and Friends, is up to 440 members. We have tons of folks over here that enjoy helping each other and just supporting and encouraging each other. You can get great information there. Uh, Jade, as far as blood panels go, I advise getting them done when you start and then every six months to just keep kind of an eye on where you're at and what things are going on. Because truthfully, it's going to take your body about six months to regulate as far as your cholesterol goes, that kind of thing. And your A1C is going to come down very quickly. 
So, I mean, it's up to you if you want to do that more often, but truthfully, there's no reason to do it more than every six months. So here we go. How do we get into ketosis? How do we start this lifestyle? Five simple steps. Number one, get rid of the sugar. That means all sugars, y'all. That doesn't mean just table sugar. It means agave nectar and honey, natural honey, all of those things, they are all sugar. Get rid of the sugar in your pantry, in your refrigerator. Do not use any types of natural sugars. You want to get rid of all the sugar in your diet. Two, get rid of the grains. That's wheat, oats, oatmeal, breads, pastas, all of those things, all the grains. So we're getting rid of the sugar, we're getting rid of the grains. Number three, I want you to get rid of the crappy oils that we have been told to use for years and years. That's seed oils and vegetable oils, y'all. You do not need to use those. Those are, they are processed in a big plant somewhere. You want to use natural oils. You want to use coconut oil, olive oil, bacon grease, real lard. Those are the types of oils you want to use. Avocado oil is excellent. Ruth, to answer, to uh, respond to that, Yes, exercise does help to reduce fasting insulin, but the truth is, is that insulin changes constantly. It's actually very hard to monitor fasting insulin unless you do your the labs early, early in the morning before you've taken anything in, because even a cephalic insulin, even a cephalic insulin response can cause your insulin to change, and that can be smelling something sweet. Tasting something sweet, thinking of something sweet, it can it can actually trigger an insulin response. But yes, exercise does lower insulin responses for up to 48 hours. You do not have to do chronic cardio. You don't have to start running 10 miles a day. Just start moving. That's actually step number five. Let's get to step number four first. Number one, we got rid of sugar. Number two, we get rid of grains. Number three, we get rid of those crappy oils. Number four, you need to work on your sleep habits. Sleep habits are super important in allowing your body to heal, allowing your body to take a break from all the things it does during the day that you don't even think about. Digestion, stress, all the moving around, cleaning the house, going back and forth to work, dealing with people in public, road rage, all of those things. Your body's dealing with all of that constantly. When you sleep, you allow your body to take a break. And you allow, I heard today on Dr. Barry's live that he did this afternoon in Jackson, Tennessee, he made the perfect reference and I absolutely loved it because I worked in a plant for over 20 years. I worked in a cotton mill for over 20 years. And I don't know about anybody else there out here that has worked in a mill, but he made the perfect reference to this. When you work in a mill, what happens when you run out of product or when they have to shut the mill down? Does everybody go home? Nope. Guess what? Guess who works when they shut a mill down? Those 24 seven mills like the one I worked in, I worked at Haynes here in town, and it's a 24-7 cotton mill, but every once in a while, we would get shut down for three or four days. Well, guess what department I worked in? Maintenance. Guess who works during those shutdowns? Maintenance. Why? Because when that plant is shut down is the only time that you can get some of that incredibly important maintenance done. Same thing with your sleep, guys. When you're asleep and you are in that restful REM, that is when your body can do some of that all-important maintenance that needs to be done. That's when healing occurs at a cellular level where you have lost some weight and some of those fat cells have broken open or where your heart has just been 
taxed all day from running and going and working and dealing with everything, when you sleep is when your body is able to do the maintenance that is needed desperately to maintain healthy levels. When you sleep is when your brain consolidates all the information that you have learned during the day. When you sleep is when your body gets its reset. Now, yes, Jade, magnesium can definitely help to sleep. Magnesium also helps with any type of leg cramps, restless leg syndrome, those types of things. Number five, the last thing, is getting active. You want to get active, and this helps to manage stress. Now, I'm not talking about going to the gym five days a week. I'm not talking about going out and running a marathon or training for a half marathon. I'm talking about taking a walk. Go outside and play with your kids. Go play basketball. Go outside and throw the ball back and forth with your youngins or your grandkids. If it's just you, take a quiet walk in the woods. That is my favorite thing to do, y'all. I live in the Northeast Georgia mountains and my house literally sits in the edge of the woods. My favorite thing to do when I've had a terribly stressful week, which I've had this week, this morning I got up early, which is very not normal for me, but I got up early this morning. I had steak and eggs for breakfast. And right after that, before I did anything else, I literally put on my sweatsuit, put on my good shoes, put my headphones in, I listened to a podcast that I had downloaded, which was happened to be the two keto dudes, and I went for a walk in the woods. I enjoyed nature, and while I was walking, I listened to that podcast. About halfway through my walk, I was like, you know what? I just need some quiet time. I turned it off, and I just allowed myself to absorb the beauty of God's creation because that's what manages stress. Allowing yourself to decompress. Plus, I got in a little bit of a workout because I live at the foot of a mountain. So when I walk in the woods, I'm walking uphill. So take a walk. If it's raining outside, go walk in Walmart or Home Depot or a mall if it's close to you. If nothing else, y'all, just get active for a few minutes a day. Manage that stress. The next thing I want to say... Before we get into the foods that you're going to eat on keto, I want to talk about electrolytes. The ketogenic lifestyle tends to be diuretic, mainly because it reduces all the inflammation in your body and it allows your body to let go of toxins and of all the things that it's holding in your fat cells normally. So you're going to go to the bathroom a lot more often. Also, your body is not going to hold on to salt. Many of us, before we started the ketogenic lifestyle, had trouble with swollen feet. I had cankles terribly. I would get off work in the evenings or in the mornings when I worked night shift at the hospital. And I could literally see the outline of my shoes and my socks in my feet because I had plus two pitting edema in my feet, which means that my feet were so swelled that I could press on them and my finger marks would be left in the swelling. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. Hot tea. Today I'm drinking black cherry. And y'all, this doesn't require any sweetener or anything. It's just great for, for hydration. It's got a little bit of a taste to it. It's delicious. Anyways, within two weeks of starting keto, I had no swelling. But here's the thing about that. Because your body is no longer holding on to those things, you have to make sure that you're getting enough sodium, magnesium, and potassium in your diet to maintain your, elect your electrolyte levels. So, sodium. You want to make sure you're getting two teaspoons of good salt each day. Now, for me, up until just a month or so ago, that was pink Himalayan salt. Hey, Brianna, y'all, this is my daughter. She's in Wilmington Beach this weekend. 
with her husband and some other couples from the military. They're over there for a marriage retreat. And she's got my precious little granddaughter, Nevaeh Grace, over there. She gets to see the ocean for the first time. And she, it will be a month old tomorrow. So, salt, two teaspoons. Up until about a month ago, for me, that was pink Himalayan salt. And then, when I met with Dr. Barry and Nisha in uh, Tennessee for the ADAPT conference a couple of weeks ago, we got to talking about salt and talking about Redmond's sea salt. Redmond's is actually mined in the state of Utah, so it's local for the most part, and it is brought in from a dead sea that was from millions of years ago that has no pollutants in it. So I have started using Redmond's Real Salt. Now, they gave away samples at the conference, and I've been using that. I'm waiting on my Redmond's to come in the mail. I ordered it from Amazon. So pink Himalayan salt is fine. But you want to make sure you're getting two teaspoons a day. Now, the way you do that is you just measure out two teaspoons of salt in the morning. Put it in a little container. I buy these little condiment containers. Lindsay, are you talking about the Redmond's or pink Himalayan salt? You can get Redmond's from Amazon. It's R-E-D-M-O-N-D-S. Redmond's Real Salt. You can get it from Amazon. Pink Himalayan salt you can get in most grocery stores and I buy it by the bag full. You just want to make sure it's a good quality salt, not umbrella salt. The Umbrella Girl salt, y'all, the table salt that we've always used, not good. Do you know that there's dextrose in Umbrella Girl salt? Do you know what dextrose is? Sugar. Who knew? Who's going to put salt, sugar in your salt? Well, they do. <laughs> Anyways, I buy these little condiment containers at Walmart. This is a two ounce container. They also have a five ounce container. They have lids that go on them. This is what I first started using. I now use um, either the little zipper pill pouches that you can get in the pharmacy for your daily pills, or I use these tea tiny little containers. You've probably seen the picture of it on Sassy Keto Nurse that I found at the Dollar Tree. But either way, two teaspoons. Put two teaspoons of salt in your container that's awesome, Lindsay. I love having another nurse on here. I absolutely love having my nurses. It's like a sisterhood. We have tons of nurses in Sassy Keto Nurse and Friends. So two teaspoons of salt in your little container. It don't matter what you put it in, y'all. Just two teaspoons of salt that you can carry with you throughout the day. Now, you're not going to need a salt shaker for the rest of the day because you use all your salt from that container. Use it when you fix your breakfast in the morning. Sprinkle some salt from here. Lindsay, I used to do hospice too. God bless you. I will pray for you, sister. It takes a special heart to be able to do it. I am a pediatric home health nurse. I deal with fragile respiratory children and children with seizure disorders. So I do the vent trachs and all that kind of good stuff. And kids that bless them, they have seizures throughout the day and respiratory problems and all those kind of good things. I just kind of accidentally moved into pediatrics and have found that it's my heart and that's where I'm supposed to be. So I absolutely love it. So you just use your salt from this container all day. You can put it in your water. You can put it in your coffee. You can put it on your food. All day long, make sure you use that two teaspoons of salt. Okay? Magnesium. You're going to get lots of magnesium from the foods that you eat. And that's going to be red meats, fatty red meat, organ meats, dark leafy greens, avocados. All those things have a great deal of magnesium in them as well as potassium. Now, magnesium, sometimes people will find that they will have a little bit of restless leg syndrome or they will experience leg cramps or have trouble sleeping at night. What I recommend is Calm Tea. It's located in the pharmacy in Walmart and in all the pharmacies as far as CVS, Walgreens, those types of things. I'm sure that Rite Aid also has it. But it's in the pharmacy section. It's with the magnesium supplements. It's called Calm Tea. It's a raspberry lemon flavor. 
it's delicious. I drink one glass of tea every night that has the calm tea in it. I'm up to using about a teaspoon a night. You will want to start that slowly because if you take too much magnesium, it can cause some GI distress and give you diarrhea. Now, potassium, I do not want you supplementing to potassium. You can use up to a quarter teaspoon of no salt or new salt either because they are straight potassium, but I do not want you to supplement potassium unless you have a doctor's order to do so. That can be very dangerous and it can mess with your cardiac rhythms, with your respiratory function, and with your brain function. So your potassium you're going to get from the foods that you eat during the day. As far as magnesium goes, you can also use Epsom salt soaks, Epsom salt lotion, there's a spray, uh, or you can take pills. If you take pills, I advise that you do magnesium glyconate. It seems to break down and process much easier in the body and it doesn't cause as much GI distress. So we've talked about how to get started, the first five things you wanna do to get started on keto. Let's talk about food. What types of foods are you gonna eat on keto? Y'all, you're gonna be so happy for breakfast, you can do bacon and eggs, bacon and sausage, eggs and sausage, omelets, cook your eggs in bacon grease, cheese and eggs, or you can just do BPC. BPC, you're going to see a lot in the keto community. That stands for Bulletproof Coffee. There is a brand called Bulletproof Coffee. That's not what I'm recommending at all. I don't recommend anybody spend money on anything except real whole foods. Bulletproof Coffee in the keto community means taking your coffee and adding good healthy fats to that coffee to start your day out. For me, that is a 32 ounce tumbler of coffee. Yes, y'all, I said 32 ounces of coffee. I did tell y'all I'm a nurse. 32 ounces of coffee. I add coconut oil, MCT oil, which is medium chain triglycerides. I use Kiss My Keto Pure C8 MCT oil. You can actually access that on the Sassy Keto Nurse page, and you can go through my Amazon affiliate link to get that. And uh, I'll get like 12 cents off of it, but Kiss My Keto MCT oil, real Kerrygold butter. Now that's important, y'all. You want to use real butter. I don't want you using margarine. I don't want you using, I can't believe it's not butter. I don't want you using Shed Spread or Country Crock or any of those. Those are not real butter. My favorite is Kerrygold. It is a little bit expensive. It's $2.88 a block at my Walmart. You can get it salted or unsalted. I use salted in my coffee and when I eat it on my steaks and stuff, I use unsalted when I bake, which I don't do very often. Also good is Plugra or any of the Amish butters. You want a butter that is made from nothing but cream and salt. Okay, real whole butter. So in my coffee, I've got coconut oil, MCT, butter, and then I add a half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt, a quarter teaspoon of no salt, and then I put um, a teaspoon, well, I think I used two teaspoons of hazelnut extract. No, I just use a teaspoon. It's a teaspoon of hazelnut extract that I put in mine because I like the taste of the hazelnut. And then I put a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. I hit that with an immersion blender, which creams it all up, and it gets all of that fat incorporated. It emulsifies it and breaks it down so that you don't have a fat slick sitting on top of your coffee. It makes it more like a latte, and it's delicious. So you can do that in any coffee. If you do a cup of coffee that's this size, you can just add some MCT, some butter, a little bit of salt, some heavy whipping cream, and an extract of your choice. Now, some people do use sweeteners. I try not to use sweeteners now. I've gotten away from using sweeteners just because it helps to get rid of those cravings so that I don't crave sweets. 
but some people do. If you're going to use sweeteners, the accepted sweeteners in keto are stevia, erythritol, monk fruit, truvia, pyure, which is what I use in my house. And pyure is just a mixture of stevia and erythritol. Erythritol can have a bit of a cooling effect if you use it alone. So the stevia erythritol blend seems to help. I cannot use granulated stevia. It spikes my blood sugar, but I can use stevia drops. Not real sure what the difference is there, but I have um, tracked that with my Keto Mojo and tracked my blood sugar and my ketones to see what affects me. So you'll have to use different types of things for yourself and figure it out for yourself because every single person is different. Now that's the next thing I want to talk about, y'all. What works for me, I mean, I could, I post constantly on Instagram and here on Facebook what I eat each day. But what I do every day may not work for you because every human body is different. Splenda actually contains sucralose. Sucralose is a personal choice, but sucralose does tend to spike blood sugar. Splenda is used by a lot of the keto community, but it does contain sucralose. And I know tons and tons of folks that sucralose does affect their blood sugar. So you would just have to see if it affected yours or not, Lindsay. But my, my recommendation is to stay away from sucralose if you can just because it's just one of those temperamental type of, of sweeteners. So what I, I was saying was every human body is different. Everybody's body chemistry is different. Everybody's gut microbiome is different. The bacteria in your gut. Truvia is perfect. Truvia is perfect. That is a stevia or erythritol blend. It is much like Pyure. It's just a name brand. So, so every single person is going to be different. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to find out where to start. And to do that, you can do your macros calculation. Macros are three different things. Carbs, protein, and fat. To do your macros calculation, I have a YouTube video that will walk you through exactly how to do it step by step that is it's i will um, link that as well or you can find it on sassy keto nurse i have it linked there several times you find out you know you're going to be below 20 grams of carbs for women most of the time your carbs or your protein is going to be somewhere between 50 and 65 grams just depending on your age your weight your height and your activity level then everything else is going to be the fat, y'all. And I know that for those that are just starting out, that sounds crazy. But the truth is, you get your fat from fatty cuts of meat, ribeyes, chuck eye steak, New York strip, a big, uh, you can do the roast, you can do pork, you can do pork loin. And now, instead of what you've always been raised to think, stay away from the fat, stay away from the fat, you can actually eat those cuts of meat, those cheaper cuts of meat that have the fat and the marbling in them because that is actually very beneficial to your health. And in keto, it is incredibly beneficial because you get all those collagen stores as well. So you're going to watch that video. If you just don't want to watch the video and do it yourself, I will do them for you. You can request that I do your macros calculation just by sending me an email at ketonurse86400 at yahoo.com or at the top of Sassy Keto Nurse, there is a send email button. You can just click that button, send me an email and say, I need my macros calculated. And I will send you an invoice through your email, you can pay me there. It's ten dollars to do macros calculations, and that will get you started, so that you kind of know where you're starting. But now I'm going to tell you guys that macros calculation when you first start is just a start. You may not be exactly on that mark. You may do that, and after a couple of weeks, you're still not feeling exactly like you think you should, or you're not losing any weight. Nothing's happening. Your measurements haven't changed. 
If so, send me another email. Say, hey, you know, this isn't working. Well, till we get, we'll work on it. Because you may need to drop your protein a little bit and raise your fat. You may need to raise your protein and drop your fat. One of the two. But never, ever go over 20 grams of carbs. Now, with carbs, the only carbs that you're going to be eating are from vegetables. So, I'm going to tell you, I always figure carbohydrates, total carbohydrates other than vegetables. If it has a label on it, you count total, total carbs, period. Now, I, w I do allow for net carbs when it comes to vegetables and avocados because avocados have like 16 grams of carbs per avocado, but it's like 12 and a half to 13 grams of fiber. So it's three net carbs. So how do you figure net carbs? You take the total carbs, subtract fiber. I do not subtract sugar alcohols because those do affect your insulin response and your blood sugar. Okay? Just like sucralose. Some of those do. And like for me, granulated stevia. So I don't subtract those. All right, back to food. For breakfast, you can do all the breakfast food, y'all, as far as real foods. No breads, but you can do eggs, bacon, sausage, ham, all of that good stuff. You can add sour cream, cheese, butter, bacon fat, all of those. Now for lunches, if you want to keep it light during lunch when you're first starting out, because when you're first starting out, you're going to be a little hungrier until you get fat adapted. So you're going to probably want a lunch. For lunches, I stick with either a big salad. And when I say a big salad, I'm talking about a bowl full of dark leafy greens. Add to it some bell peppers, some cucumbers, some boiled eggs, some avocado, maybe some mushrooms, although those are kind of high in protein and carbs. Then you can add a full fat dressing. For full fat dressings, I use my Sassy Keto Ranch. The recipe for that is on my website and on the page. And then I add some heavy whipping cream to my ranch dip to thin it out for dressing. I also like to use avocado oil mixed with apple cider vinegar and emulsify that up and use it as a oil and vinegar mixture for my salads. Now you can add about two ounces of protein to your salad, but when you add protein, make sure it's a good protein, y'all. Either use a good fatty fish, say tuna or salmon or some mackerel or dark meat chicken. Just take and cook up some dark meat chicken, keep it in your refrigerator. You can just pull it right off the bone, skin and all, and shred that up over your salad. Steak. I love to cook a couple of chuck eye steaks and then just cut them up into small chunks and keep that in a bowl in the refrigerator. You can take two ounces of that, throw it on top of a salad. And I heat mine up before I put it on the salad. It's really good. Kind of gives you that cold and hot together. Yum. You can do some pork. You know, do a pork loin. Cut that up. Put it on top of your salad. Anything of that nature. Real bacon. I fry real bacon. Every week I fry at least a pound of bacon. And I break it up into just crumbles and keep it in my refrigerator and I use that real bacon over top of salads. I put it in my scrambled eggs. I put it over a cauliflower mash sometimes. Sometimes I just have some steamed broccoli with bacon over top of it. That kind of thing. Uh, you can also do deli rolls. You want to get a good quality deli meat. I'm not talking about the stuff that you buy over there with the cold cuts. Those have a lot of preservatives and a lot of fillers. Most of them have sugar. Go to your deli counter and get some good quality deli meat. I like 
the chicken. I like the roast beef especially or corned beef. Have it sliced a little thick, about a two, like a sandwich slice. Then you can add some mayo, homemade mayo, or y'all, you can use the store-bought mayo. It has soybean oil, which is not great, but if that's all you can afford, that's all you can afford. Best case scenario, you make your own mayo. You can find recipes for that all over Google and YouTube and Pinterest. But you put some mayo on there. For me, I add mashed avocado and some sassy keto ranch. I put that on there. I add some cheese. I love provolone or Havarti. Those are some great cheeses. Monterey Colby, Colby Monterey Jack, uh, Good Sharp Cheddar. Put that on there. And then you want a little bit of a crunch. So for those, that, those of you that love pickles, put a pickle spear in the center. I don't do pickles, but I do cucumbers and celery. I really love celery. Celery has some great benefits. So I usually do celery. Sometimes I'll do cucumber. But then you just salt that real good from your little container, pinch of salt over top of your rolls, roll it up. I do a couple of those for lunch. Y'all, you're not getting a lot of protein because you've only got one slice of meat there, but you got some really good fats. And then I eat that with a couple of boiled eggs. Both the boiled eggs, guess what I add? Pinch of salt to both boiled eggs, okay? Eggs are a complete food. Eggs produce an entire being. Eggs have been demonized for years and years, but they are a complete food. Carry boiled eggs with you when you go out. Boiled eggs, beef sticks, macadamia nuts, pecans, cheese sticks. Those are great things to carry in your purse or in your lunch bag wherever you go. They will keep you full. They'll keep you satiated if you absolutely need them. For dinner, lots of dinner options, guys. One of my absolute favorites since I got my Instapot is to make Italian chicken. Now, to make Italian chicken, how do you do that? I use a avocado oil and then Italian seasonings. I put frozen chicken thighs into my, that's bone-in, skin-on chicken thighs, y'all. You want the bone-in, skin-on, you're going to get the most nutrients from that meat. Put it into your Instant Pot, put a stick of butter in there, and some avocado oil with Italian seasoning. Put that in there, close your Instant Pot down, set it on the chicken setting, and let it self-decompress. You've got dinner in 30 minutes. Dip that stuff in some Sassy Keto Ranch dressing or some dip. Perfect. For sides, you can have broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. Have some mushrooms. Have some green beans fried in bacon grease. Y'all, if you'll take green beans and fry them down like fresh green beans and take just a couple tablespoons of bacon grease, put it into a pan, Put your green beans in there and cover them with a lid. Let them cook on one side, flip them around a little bit, stir them around a little bit until they start to brown around the edges. Y'all, those are the best green beans you'll ever eat. And then hit them with what? Salt. Some of the best green beans you'll ever eat. Brussels sprouts, I do the exact same thing. I take fresh Brussels sprouts, cut them in half, fry them in bacon grease, sprinkle them with salt. I absolutely love them. Uh, you can add to all of your dinners sour cream, cream cheese, cheese, butter, bacon grease. One of my favorite things over a salad, y'all, is take warmed bacon grease and pour warmed bacon grease over my salad. I think it's absolutely delicious. It gives it some flavor. It gives it a little bit of oil. And it gives me lots and lots of energy. Another great dinner brown ground beef and you want to use a good ground beef you can do um at my store you can get 80 20 you can get 73 27 you can get 75 25. i go with the 73 27 because it has the highest fat content i brown up a pound of ground beef season it really well with my salt and some pepper and then i add a whole block of cream cheese and let that cook down into my ground beef 
and then I will add two cups of broccoli crowns and just drop those down into it, cover the lid, and let it sit and simmer for about 15 minutes. It softens that broccoli, and you've got um, broccoli and beef. It's so delicious, y'all. I serve that with sour cream. You can do just baked chicken. If you just bake your chicken, take chicken thighs. You always want to use dark meat chicken. Take your chicken thighs, pull the skin up, and put about half a pat of butter underneath the skins. That's going to help crisp those skins up really well. Season it good. Bake it in the oven at 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes, however long it takes for it to get completely done. And then serve it with your favorite side and some some sauce now you can make cheese sauce for your broccoli guess how super simple half a cup of heavy whipping cream in a pot add some sharp cheddar cheese to it mix it up you can add a little sour cream if you want a little bit of a tang to it but just mix it up pour it over your broccoli you've got cheese sauce you can do Alfredo sauces with heavy whipping cream, Parmesan cheese, and some some spices. Y'all, there's so many ways to go about this, and it's so simple and delicious foods. I want everybody, I'm going to open this up now to questions. Please jump in and ask any questions that you might have. I want to talk to you guys. I want to answer all the questions that I can tonight. Also, those of you on the replay, if you have questions, please feel free to post those on this video. I will be checking these. I answer every question. It may not be the same day because I may not see it until the next day, but I will answer your question. If you want an answer that day, if you want to an answer pretty quick, probably within an hour, make sure to send me an email. That's ketonurse86400 at yahoo.com or you can just click the send email button at the top of the page. Uh, let's talk about maintaining. Maintaining ketosis. All you have to do, guys, is do the things we've been talking about. This is a lifestyle. This is not a diet. This is not something that you do for four months and quit. Lindsay, with fasting, you're going to naturally move into an intermittent fasting just because with this way of eating, with this lifestyle, the fat satiates you to a point that your body learns from the ingestion of the, the high fats, your body learns to use fat for fuel. And so what will happen is your body will actually start to use your body fat and it will stay maintained. And you won't be hungry. This usually happens within the first week or so for most people. They just get to where they're not hungry anymore. You want to make sure you eat enough calories a day to reach your BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate, so that you're keeping your calories high enough for basic bodily function. But you can fast. The best thing I can tell you, when you first start out, you're going to be fasting. You're dry fasting when you're sleeping. You can put your fasting window around your sleeping. So like for me, I just had my last meal before I did this video. I had a chuck eye steak and three eggs this morning. I didn't eat all day today. I wasn't hungry at all. I drank water with some salt and lemon in it. Actually, it wasn't salt. It was keto fasting drops from Keto Chow. And I used those. And then I had another chuck eye steak for dinner right before this. I won't eat anything else tonight. So my fasting window started at about 7.30. Now, I won't eat anything again until tomorrow. I'll probably get up around, uh, it's Sunday, so probably 8.39. So that's already 13 to 14 hours. When I wake up, I probably won't eat until around lunchtime. And even then, it'll probably be my BPC. So I will naturally fast between 16 and 18 hours almost every day. Then, if you want to move into extended fasting, that's when you want to look into 
the benefits of extended fasting, how to push those windows. And you can fast up to, I mean, you can fast for a month at a time. I've seen people that have done it for 30 and 40 days, but it's just not necessary. My longest fast was 32 hours, and it was only because I just forgot to eat. I just didn't, I wasn't hungry at all. I keep my electrolytes up because every bottle of water that I drank, I put salt in it. And I always drank my magnesium tea at night. So my electrolytes were fine. You will move into that on your own. My best suggestion if you decide to do fasting is to look on YouTube for Jason Fong and get this book. I know it's backwards. It's The Complete Guide to Fasting written by Jason Fung and Jimmy Moore. And this book is incredible. This book will explain, that's, let me put it right there where everybody can see it, The Complete Guide to Fasting. It will explain fasting and how it benefits the body. But you will move into an intermittent fasting window pretty easily. And honestly, Lindsay, I completely agree. The thing is, is that with this, you're going to have crazy energy too. You will feel like you have never felt before in your life. You are going to be amazed. And as a nurse, when I first started this way of eating, when I first started this lifestyle, it was so hard for me to do this because it went against everything I had ever been taught. And it went against everything I'd ever taught anybody on discharge from the hospital. But... After practicing this lifestyle now for the last almost 20 months now, I have never felt like this in my life. I've never felt so healthy. My labs are the labs of a 20-year-old. My cholesterol is beautiful. Now, not in my physician's eyes. I will say that. Your cholesterol levels will probably go, your total cholesterol will probably go up. But your triglyceride to HDL ratio, amazing. My triglycerides at my last labs was 74, which is crazy low for triglycerides. My HDL was like a, a 194 or something. It was crazy high. And that's... Lindsay, so many of us nurses do that because we work our shift and during our shift we don't have time to eat. And then we come home and we get all the stuff done at home that we have to get done and we're like, oh crap, we need to eat. And you eat and then you go to bed. You don't want to do that because it loads your liver. So now what you can do is you can do that BPC in the morning. If you, I never drank coffee before keto. The reason that I love it is because it tastes like a latte. It's like having a, it's like a cappuccino. It doesn't taste like coffee so much. But I do, I'm down to, I eat either one or two meals a day, and it's almost always at home. I hardly ever eat at work. And I work 10-hour days, so I hardly ever eat at work, and I never snack if I can help it, because I just don't need to. I carry snacks with me in case I need them. If I end up on the road or if I end up getting called, to another patient's house or if I end up with a caseload that day that just doesn't afford me the ability to sit down and eat, I do make sure that I have boiled eggs, beef sticks, macadamia nuts, plenty of water, and I keep my salt with me all day. So that gets me through the day. But then when I come home at night, I'll fix me something in the evenings. Do you like the Kerrygold in your coffee? It's some amazing stuff, and once you have gotten to where you really like it, I do recommend MCT, the Kiss My Keto Pure C8 MCT. But yeah, boiled eggs are incredible. Number one, you get all the nutrients, that you get the niacin, vitamin A, vitamin C, all that good stuff is in boiled eggs. Red meat contains all of that. Avocado, if you don't like avocado. Guys, so many people do not like avocado, and I was one of them. If you don't like avocado, here's my suggestion. Get the um, Holy Avocado. It's in the produce section. It's little packets, and it has six little cups. 
that is the it's the same as a half of an avocado. Get that, combine it with sour cream and salsa or sour cream and hot sauce. Mix it up, it's delicious. <laughs> Edna, you had too much liquid in your cup. You have to have a cup that's bigger than what you're working with. Um, you Did you use the, you have an uh, immersion blender? Oh, before this live is over, I have to say something. Y'all, I received this in the mail today. This is a Vomalon. This is a travel milk frother. You mash the button. You see what that does? Y'all, I've had this in my wish list on my Amazon for about six months because I wanted to get it, but it costs like 20 bucks and so I wasn't willing to, to pay for it because for those of you that don't know, I'm cheap. This came in the mail today to my house and it said on it that it was a gift but it didn't say who it was from. So whoever sent me the Vomalon milk frother, the travel milk frother, God bless you, thank you. I am extremely grateful because this makes it possible for me to do uh, fatty coffees and fatty teas on the go. I really appreciate it. Oh, I don't know what that is. Dr. Formulated Keto Organic MCT Powder. I'll have to look that up. I always recommend the uh, Kiss My Keto MCT Oil. I have not tried the powders yet, but I do want to try the Ballistic Powders because they have some flavored MCT powders, and I'd like to try those, but those are very expensive. So I just use the oil. Yes, this is on Amazon. It is a, let me get it up there where you can get a screenshot. It'll be backwards, but you can get a screenshot of it. Vomalon. It's a Vomalon travel frother. And it has a cover. It takes three AAA batteries that come with it. This is one of the frothers that goes on it. This is a triple frother. And then it also came with... It came in this little box, and see, it was, all, it was all packaged up so nice, and it comes with a single frother as well. But for my drinks, for my oil, to emulsify that oil really well, I wanted the triple. So, whoever sent this to me, God bless you. And I have no idea how you found out how to get it to me because I don't have my address anywhere unless you were able to find me on Google or something. <sighs> but I sure do appreciate it. Maybe it just automatically does that if you do it from somebody's wish list. I don't know. I've never done that. But either way, God bless whoever sent me this. I absolutely love it. Um, it's 8.58. Are there any more questions, guys? And Belinda, did I answer your questions today, honey? I sent you another email with lots of information in it. Thank you so much for, for trusting me to answer your questions and to help you on your journey. Guys, again, for those that don't, don't know, my name is Melissa English. I'm the Sassy Keto Nurse. If you have not joined Sassy Keto Nurse and Friends here on Facebook, please do. We absolutely love having new members. We have a great time over there. We do, I do a daily affirmation every morning and a challenge and that kind of thing. February is Love Yourself February. We're going to be doing something new in March. And if you enjoy what I do and if you want to help with my mission to help as many people as possible take back their health I I would let you know that I do have a patreon page it is www.patreon.com slash sassy keto nurse you can access it at the top of the sassy keto nurse and friends page 
And on that Patreon page, you can make any monthly pledge that you would like, or you can make a one-time pledge. If you make a monthly pledge of $12.50 or more, which is a Tier 2 pledge, you will be added to the Sassy Keto Nation, which is my Patreon group. We have a private group, and we do three lives there a week, or we're supposed to. We've missed the last several Fridays just because life happens. But on Monday nights, we do informational lives. On Wednesday nights, we do book reviews. This month in February, we'll be reviewing Lies My Doctor Told Me by Dr. Kendi Berry. Next month in March, we're going to start reviewing and reading Jimmy Moore's Keto Clarity. And we'll be doing that on Wednesday nights. And then Friday nights are supposed to be kitchen lives. Those are the nights that I'm going to cook and we're going to talk about good kitchen stuff and share recipes and different kitchen fun. The group is called Sassy Keto Nurse and Friends. Please go ahead and join us and have a great time there. If you want to help with my mission, go on over to the Patreon group, make a pledge there, throw a couple of bucks at me and it kind of affords me a little more the, the ability to do more lives, do more videos. I'm working on getting the YouTube channel really bulked up. I want to get some new videos up on there. It's just a matter of time, guys. And right now I have to work full time. I work 60 to 80 hours a week, depending on how things are going. And when life happens, it happens. So any help is appreciated. Any gifts are appreciated. That's just awesome. I'm just tickled to death about that. I just can't get over it. Uh, I love you guys so much, and anything I can do to help, if you guys, my dad's doing great, Edna, thank you so much for asking, my dad had knee replacement surgery last week, and he is doing excellent, he has a wonderful physical therapist that comes and works with him twice a week, and a great nurse that's been coming three times a week, so he's been doing really great, and his blood sugars are looking much better, so that's a wonderful thing. I love you guys. It's 9 o'clock. It's time for me to have a FaceTime session with my granddaughter. So I will talk to you guys soon. I will be doing these information sessions every Saturday. If you know anyone that has type 2 diabetes, that has, anti that has inflammatory disorders, that has autoimmune disorders, that could use this information, please, guys, Please share this information, share this video. I will be uploading this video to the YouTube. And you guys, well, thank you, Edna. I hope that I'm a good nurse. My family seem to think so. I love being a nurse. It's what the Lord called me for. So I'm going to get off of here. God bless y'all. Stay sassy. Sassy Keto Nurse, signing off.